Support comes from Rancho La Puerta, a resort with 84 years of wellness experience and vacations centered on mindfulness and well-being. Activities like sunrise hikes, water classes, yoga, and spa therapies. RanchoLaPuerta.com LAist and Show and Tell present an evening with David Sedaris. The writer, humorist, and radio contributor will take the stage Saturday, November 16th at the United Theater on Broadway. Tickets and information at LAist.com slash events. Today on the LA Report, the third of the three big unions in Hollywood has cut a tentative deal on a new contract with the studios and streamers. We'll explain how LA County plans to turn $5 million into half a billion dollars of medical debt relief. And we'll tell you about a really, really, really big fireworks bust in Gardena. It's Wednesday, June 26th. I'm Nick Roman. This is the LA Report from LA at 89.3. A year ago, Hollywood scriptwriters were on strike. Weeks later, the actors joined him, and movie and TV production was frozen for months. Well, eventually, both the Writers Guild and SAG-AFTRA, the Actors Union, signed new contracts and work resumed. But there was one more union the studios and streamers had to deal with, IATSE, the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. It represents 50,000 film and TV crew members. Its contract was about to expire, and if IATSE called a strike, production would be frozen again. Well, late last night, IATSE announced it had cut a deal with the studios and streamers on a tentative contract. No details yet on the three-year contract, but Elaine Lowe with our entertainment news partner, The Ankler, says you can figure it includes pay raises and other pluses. There are things like triple time for hourly workers on any workday that's longer than 15 hours. That was one of the proposed things that IATSE mentioned, uh, as well as new protections around AI and increases to IATSE's pension and health plans. IATSE members still need to ratify the new contract. No date yet on when that'll happen. Now to another labor agreement, this one with 6,000 employees at Food for Less grocery stores. Six locals with the United Food and Commercial Workers Union say they've reached a tentative contract agreement with grocery giant Kroger, which owns Food for Less. The union and Kroger say that deal includes better pay and better benefits. We told you yesterday L.A. County supervisors are moving ahead with a $5 million plan they say could wipe out half a billion dollars in medical debt held by thousands of Angelinos who can't afford to pay it off. So how can $5 million cover 100 times that much in medical debt? Well, Molly Castle work at KFF Health News says the county wants to buy up medical debt that's been discounted. Most people don't know this, but debt collectors who buy unpaid bills to then try to collect the owed funds are buying those unpaid bills for pennies on the dollar. Rather than have debt collectors buy the debt, the New York-based nonprofit group Undo Medical Debt will buy it and retire it. L.A. County will team up with Undo Medical Debt to make it happen for low-income Angelinos. No date yet on when that program will launch. When we come back, a really, really big fireworks bust in Gardena. Support comes from Rancho La Puerta, a health resort with 84 years of wellness experience, providing summer vacations centered on mindfulness and well-being. Activities include sunrise hikes, water classes, yoga, and spa therapies, all set in a backdrop of a dreamy summer sky. A six-acre organic garden provides fresh fruits and vegetables daily. Learn more at RanchoLaPuerta.com. Support for Alleyist comes from East West Players, presenting the show Unbroken Blossoms by Philip W. Chung, directed by Jeff Liu. This world premiere play follows two Chinese Americans who are hired as the consultants for D.W. Griffith's newest film, an interracial love story between a white actress and an actor in yellow face makeup. Unbroken Blossoms performs June 27th through July 21st in downtown LA. Tickets at eastwestplayers.org. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Irvine has passed a resolution to require those who move into North Irvine neighborhoods near Orange County's Bowerman Landfill to waive their right to sue the landfill operators over the smell or other annoyances. 
The story from reporter Yusra Farzan. The Gateway Village is set to be built across the freeway from the Bavaman landfill. Residents in the community can sue the county which operates the landfill if it violates state regulations and if health issues arise from living close to the landfill. Irvine will also disclose to future residents the proximity of the landfill and the potential traffic impacts of living near Bavaman. Operations expected to increase when another dump in OC is set to close in 2026, so the city plans to build a ramp from the 241 freeway to the dump site. For LA East, I'm Yusra Farazan. Police have seized 75 tons of illegal fireworks from a commercial warehouse in Gardena. Correspondent Jill Replogle says it is one of the largest fireworks busts in recent California history. The firework stash that led to the 2021 explosion in a South L.A. neighborhood pales in comparison to this stash. Gardena officials said the fireworks had an estimated street value of between 7 and $10 million. The fireworks were safely removed from the warehouse. Police arrested three people on suspicion of possessing illegal explosives and other weapons violations. That's Jill Rep. Local. Gardena does allow safe and sane fireworks, but they have to be purchased from a licensed fireworks stand. In Los Angeles, the city that is, and unincorporated L.A. County, all fireworks are illegal. The L.A. City Council has designated the Brentwood home where movie star Marilyn Monroe lived and died as a Los Angeles historic cultural monument. Well, that stops the owner's plan to tear down the Spanish colonial-style mansion. But reporter McKenna Sievert says it does not stop neighborhood worries about gawkers and looky-loos trying to get a glimpse of the Monroe home day and night. Councilmember Tracy Park, who represents the neighborhood and the home on 5th Helena Drive, says she didn't take the vote lightly and wants to address traffic and safety concerns from neighbors. She's looking at tour bus restrictions for the surrounding streets and says they're considering moving the home to a place where fans could actually visit. The City Council's Tracy Park says she looks forward to working with the owners to see what can be done to preserve the Marilyn Monroe home and preserve peace and quiet in the neighborhood. Thanks for listening to the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow morning when Suzanne Watley brings you the L.A. Report AM edition. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey and Tiffany Ujiea. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse, our director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about this evening's stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know who makes the L.A. Report possible every day of the week? Well, it's listeners like you. That's why we ask you to donate at las.com slash join. That way, we can keep the L.A. Report and trusted local journalism coming your way every day. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Hi, everybody. This is Joe Richman. I'm the host of another show you should check out. It's called Radio Diaries. In Radio Diaries, we collaborate with teenagers and octogenarians, the famous and the unknown, to tell the extraordinary stories of ordinary life. Recently, we've done stories about the longest game in baseball history. This game is over. And the story of a man who was almost the first black astronaut. We hadn't even had great schools yet. And you're talking about sending a black guy to the moon. You can find these stories and many more on the Radio Diaries podcast.